This is video 5 in topic 10, how does a compass work? In this video, we're going to be looking at the force on a current carrying wire. Now, in the topic on streetlights, you were introduced to the concept of an electric current. Remember that an electric current was really just electrons flowing along a wire. Now we define the electric current as flowing in the opposite direction to the electrons. So if you want, it's safe to think of an electric current as the flow of positive charges in the direction that the current is flowing. But if a current is just moving charges, and if moving charges feel a force when they're placed in a magnetic field, then this means that if we place a current into a magnetic field, it should feel a force. So let's check that hypothesis now. What I have here is a 12 volt battery. So that's a fairly high voltage as there's very little resistance in this circuit. If you remember Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. It means that we're going to have a fairly large current flowing through this circuit. And so I've got a switch here so that I can just make the current flow for a very short time. If I let this current flow for very long at all, the wire would quickly heat up and everything around here would melt. Well, the wires would melt anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to temporarily hit the switch, which will cause a large current to flow. And this current is going to flow through this horseshoe magnet here. So in this horseshoe magnet, we've got a north pole and a south pole. So there's magnetic field lines going across like this. OK, let's check what happens when current flows through this wire. OK, I think quite convincingly, this wire felt a force and jumped out of the magnet. It's not going to be able to start moving unless there's a force acting on it. That's what Newton's first law says. A body at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an external force. So let's just check that that wasn't a fluke. Let's just do it again. There we go. And one more time. There we go. You can see that when this current is in the magnetic field, it does feel a force. So we can actually come up with an equation to describe the force felt by a current in a magnetic field. This equation can be written as F is equal to BIL sine theta. So F is equal to Bill sin theta. So in this equation, F is the force in Newtons, B is the magnetic field strength in Teslas, I is the current in amps, and L is the length of the wire which is inside the magnetic field. So in this case, because our magnetic field was just between these two ends of the barb magnet along here, the length that we'd be using would be this length here. And theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the current. In this case, we also use the right hand rule in order to work out the direction on the, of the force. The, your fingers, once again, represent the direction of the magnetic field. Your thumb represents the direction of the current. So in this case, the current was flowing along this way, out the screen towards you from your perspective. And so the force, once again, is out the palm of your hand, which in this case is upwards because we can think of the current as the flow of positive charges. So even though in reality it's the flow of electrons in the opposite direction. So let's solve a problem now making use of this relationship. OK, so the question is, a conducting bar with a mass of 5.00 grams is hung in a 1.20 Tesla magnetic field directed into the screen. What current needs to flow along the wire in order for the bar to just lift above the supports? Assume the supports are 10 centimetres apart. OK, so in order to answer this question, we're going to need to consider all the forces involved. In this case, we've got the weight force, mg, pulling the bar down. Now, it's going to just lift above the supports when we have an upwards force which can balance this weight force So we, when we have a force like this. Now, what is going to cause such an upwards force? 
Well, if we've got a current flowing through a magnetic field, it will be the F equals B I L sine theta force. So this tells us that the B I L force is going to need to be directed upwards. So the first thing we can do is use our right hand rule in order to work out the direction that the current must flow. So the magnetic field is going into the screen, so your fingers point into the screen, and you can see that in order to have an upwards force, the current is going to have to flow in this direction. So we know that the current must flow from left to right. And now in order for it to just lift above, we said the magnitude of these two things must be the same. So we've got mg is equal to b i l sine theta, and we're trying to calculate i. So i is equal to mg over b l sine theta. So now the mass is 5 grams, so that's 5.00 times 10 to the minus 3. g, that's the acceleration due to gravity, 9.80. B, that's the strength of the magnetic field, so 1.20. Now L is the length of the wire through which current's flowing in the magnetic field. So the current's only flowing, it'll come down this support, flow along this part and go back up there. And so this length is 10 centimetres, so 0 0.100. So even though the bar extends past this part, this part of the bar does not contribute to this force as there is no current flowing through this part of the bar. And then sine theta, that's the angle between the magnetic field, which is into the screen, and the current, which is from left to right. So that is 90 degrees. They are perpendicular to each other. And so solving this on the calculator, we get 0 0.408 amps. And so that's the answer to this question. 0.408 amps from left to right. So in this video you've seen how to calculate the force felt by a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. You've seen that the size of the force is given by the formula F is equal to BIL sine theta and that we can calculate the direction of this force by using the right hand rule. In the next video, we're going to be looking at wires again. We'll be looking at the magnetic field around the wire. Thanks to Sebastian Frick for filming this video.